Wow. I put a timer on just so you guys know what this is. Because, <laughs> you know, when it's saucy in the room, it's hard to keep track of time. I mean, Moses was with the Lord for 40 days, and God had to tell him it's time, so. <laughs> wow. Can we just close our eyes for a moment? And we do that just to just fix our attention on the Lord. We close our eyes to just close it away from all the distractions. And sometimes when we walk in a deep awareness, we learn to close our eyes with our eyes open. But physically, we have to do that sometimes to just see the Lord and to um, stir an appetite for more. And hunger determines what one receives. I can't, it doesn't matter what, what, I, what I put down this morning, it's your level of hunger that will determine how much you're going to eat. And, you know, you can be in the driest room with, you know, the most shallow word, but receive total breakthrough because it's the spirit of God on scripture. It's the breath of God on scripture itself. So sometimes we've made the excuse of like, oh, I'm just in this wrong environment or the message is not deep enough or the worship is not powerful enough. It's actually that it's us masking this place where we've lost hunger. We're masking that with an excuse. We're pointing at somebody that's not preaching right, that's not doing the right songs, that maybe is not living the right way. Why? Because we feel that internally and so we're looking for a way to identify that. So I just want to call us back to this place where we're going to steward hunger. This is something we have to fight for. This is something that has to be our value. And, you know, just for myself, and I want to say that to us, like whenever you lose an appetite, um, that's something to give attention to. Whenever you lose an appetite, whenever you become numb to the things of the spirit, numb to his presence, numb, it's not a dry season. And I get that. Sometimes we don't feel and experience the same way. But when there is no appetite, you have to look into yourself. Like, where have I taken my eyes off Jesus? Where have I shifted my focus and my attention? And just learning to close your eyes, and I mean that more mentally, closing your eyes, shutting away from the things of the world and just beholding the Lord. Because it's impossible to be with him and not burn with the same thing he's burning for. So let's just close our eyes and let's just, just lift him up. Just lift him up in your own heart. Lift him up in your mindset and your thinking. Let him just rise above every other thing. Let, let him rise above anxiety. Let him become more real than fear. Just, just, just do that just for a moment in your mind. Lord, we just honor you. We worship you. We exalt you. We lift you high. We say be enthroned upon our hearts. Holy Spirit, make us hungry. Make us hungry. We want nothing more and nothing less than you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I, I, I've been in this chapter of Ezekiel 47, and I wanted to share that with us briefly before we kind of transition into baptisms. But, you know, one of the, one of the things Jesus is for us is he's the way. He's the life, he's the truth, but he's also the way. And there is life on the other side of the cross. You know, like so many of us have encountered the cross. We've encountered salvation. We've encountered freedom from fear, from drugs, from addictions. We were born again. We received the promise. But what's next? What's after this encounter with the cross? Because... There's something through the cross that we're called to live out. And that's the, that's the way of life for a born-again believer. It's, it's what we call third heaven. It's what we call now being seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. 
which means if I'm positioned there, I'm thinking from there, I'm praying from there, I'm speaking from there, I'm praising from there. Because like sometimes when you get stuck in everything that's happening around you, you allow that to define God for you. But he's above it all. He's greater. And so there's this life on the other side of the cross and Jesus the way. And I just, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to share. And if anything, I'll just continue next week. I'm not going to bother with that too much. But let's open to Ezekiel 47 verse 3. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through the water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees and each side of the river, on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into Arabah, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Everything will live. And I want us to see this river, this water as the Holy Spirit. As intimacy with God. And I want us to see that the, the invitation of our life is a continuation of giving ourselves to the river. That this is our life. This is the invitation to progressively give yourself to the Holy Spirit. Because the question is not how much of the Holy Spirit do you have? The question is how much does the Holy Spirit have of you? And I know we like to say, Holy Spirit, you can have all of me. Holy Spirit, all I am is yours. You know, we get it from the songs we write. All I am is yours. And sometimes we hide behind those words because they don't have that kind of meaning to us. Because as he was going deeper, the depth determined his experience. So I would say this, the level of surrender determines the level of our experience. So if you're, if you're not satisfied, if you're dry and you're looking for a place that's going to feed you, sometimes the problem is not the place you're in, not the room you're in, but the level of surrender you're walking in. So when we begin to pursue the Lord, it goes in levels. How many of you experience levels in the, in the kingdom? Levels in your relationship with God. We see that in our relationships, human relationships, in our marriage, with our children, with our friends. There is levels. There is depth. So here, we also see a progression. It's a progression of surrender. The Lord measures something and invites him into it. He's like, I'm going to measure another depth for you. And now I'm inviting you to cover that distance. 
And then he measures another thousand cubits and he says, okay, now I want you to cover this distance. And it doesn't start with the river having you. It starts with you being obedient and surrendering and yielding to where it's ankle deep and then knee deep and then waist deep. And some of you who have never experienced that, it's because you haven't stewarded surrender. You haven't stewarded hunger. And so I want to say if there is an invitation to more and if there is a progression, it's good news for us. That means there is more. Every revelation is an invitation. So once you cover the thousand cubits, guess what happens? He's like, measure another. Until when? Until he has you. Until you become his. Until you are joined with him, synchronized with him, and you're manifesting the life of Christ on the earth. And I just want to say, there is a river flowing. There is a river flowing. But where is the river? How do we find the river? It flows through people that are fully surrendered to God. And everyone comes to that river and finds life. And one of the things we we have to steward is hunger i've been i've been um i've been in those places where it was so easy to pray and i've been in places and seasons in my life where it's hard to pray i've been in seasons when there's a grace to seek him and i've been in seasons where i have to do it by faith but we can't take our eyes off of this we can't lose the fight of covering that next measure, the next thousand cubits that the Holy Spirit is measuring out for us to walk through. We always experience this, I think, I, I see that in the, in the picture of like Moses having an encounter with God at the burning bush. And then that encounter gave him a new depth to cross. And so now he encountered the power of God, you know, and all these signs. But now there's a new depth. There's an invitation for a new depth. So now he's longing for more, longing for more, longing for more. Show me your glory. Show me your face. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. Why? Because it's deeper now. There's a new invitation for depth. So now ankle or, you know, knee deep is not enough. The call is for waist deep. So some of us, we're staying knee deep when the call for your life and your season is the Holy Spirit saying, come waist deep. Come waist deep. And some of you, hey, Come in all the way until you see that this river is actually impossible to cross. <laughs> Come in so deep where you lose control of your life. Where you don't feel the ground anymore and the current of the Holy Spirit and of His life is now taking over you. But see, this is what we long for. I don't know if we realize this, but we actually long for that place of freedom this is the green pastures this is us being seated it's that place where performance dies where the idea of ministry dies where it's you for him that's your life you giving yourself over to him that's the place of rest it's in the river that's the place of peace that's the place of life that's the place where effortlessly you are being moved by God. And I feel like many, many of us get stuck in shallow waters. Because you know what's connected to the progression of surrender? 
denying yourself, picking up the cross, forgiving other people, saying no to things that everyone says yes to. If he's inviting you, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, I know I have, where the invitation is there, but I choose what other people are choosing around me. But you know what the problem is? You look at them and they're happy, and you're like, why am I not happy? Why? Because you're invited into a new depth. That new depth has a new death. <laughs> but that's where life is found. It's on the other side of the cross. Some things have to be put through the cross. In Acts 8, 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out on his way. He met an Ethiopian eunuch as an important official in charge of the treasury of the Ethiopian's queen. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Uh, I want to just like give a couple examples of what it looks like when we give ourselves to the river. Because the Holy Spirit, his anointing teaches us everything we need to know. It leads us. And I know, you know, we say it's not about results. But let me say something. Power leads to results. When you are baptized, submerged into the Holy Spirit, into dunamis power of God, you better believe you're going to see results. Like your life is going to look different. Your influence is going to look different. Your impact is going to look different over time. Because sometimes, like to Philip, the invitation is actually go in the middle of nowhere. Let's just say you're looking for a stadium. You're looking for a populated place to preach the gospel. And the Spirit of God is leading you to like a desert place. Where you're like, if, if influence is your goal, you're not going to choose the desert. You know what I mean? Because God gave you a vision and you're trying to fulfill it on your own. Instead of realizing that the vision that God's given you is the invitation to say, you can't do this, so just keep giving all of yourself to me. Just keep going deeper. Just keep giving your whole life to me, and this is what I want to do through your life. So Philip is being called to the desert road, and he's walking, and we see that in the beginning, the angel of the Lord tells Philip to go. And then as he obeys that, there's a progression. The progression now is the Spirit of God is telling him, and he can tell the difference. Which means he walked in fellowship and in intimacy. He was aware of his voice. He wasn't in fear or confusion. He was in rest, yielding to the Spirit of God, yielding to the river. Now as he's walking, he hears this man reading from Isaiah and then he knows what to do. We don't see the next, the next thing. We don't see the Spirit of God telling them anything. Now the river is, is taking him. Do you see what I'm saying? Now he knows exactly what to do. He knows exactly what the Lord wants to do. And he's now doing it with him. So he baptizes him. And then we see him being teleported. Which, you know what? We should see that again. <laughs> we should see that. We should believe for things that we stop believing for. And you know, you know what he did? He shared Jesus with him. And you know, all the towns he went through on his way after he was teleported, he shared Jesus with them. He wasn't confused about how to get back and what the way is. He was surrendered. 
there was a river and God was doing something. I also want us to see another passage. In Acts 16, 6. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So they're obeying the word of God. They're going to preach the gospel. But now they're being restricted by the Holy Spirit from doing this. And what's happening? When they came to the border of Mysia and they tried to enter Bithynia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these right. But the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. I want you to see this because this is the river. They're, they, we're, we all know we're called to preach the gospel. We all know what we should do out of obedience. But there is another depth. In our obedience, in our surrender, there is a river. There is a flow. There is a leading of the Holy Spirit. And He leads us to places of impact, influence, and change. We see that because later... So they, uh, they passed Mysia and went down to uh, Tross. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and, be and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Why did he experience this restriction of the Holy Spirit? First of all, this shows us that he was yielded. That he was surrendered. That he didn't just get an assignment from God and run off to do it. He continuously gave himself to the river. He continuously gave himself to the Spirit of God. And now... The Holy Spirit is like a river leading him. And he's yielding. In his mind, I'm sure it doesn't make sense. God clearly called me, separated me from my mother's womb. I encountered him in Acts 9 on the way to Damascus. He called me to the Gentiles. I'm doing what he called me to do. And we don't see explanation. You see, if you don't have relationship... If you don't know his voice, if you're not walking in fellowship, you won't obey without an explanation. Because there's not enough trust. It takes intimacy to have trust. And so you're like, when, when God makes this clear to me, I'll do it. Or I'll just do it. <laughs> because he said it. I don't know why. I don't know what's going to come out of this. And I kind of look like a fool right now because everyone's asking me why. And I don't know how to explain it to them. But something powerful happens there. Because the Holy Spirit is not just leading them in circles. The Holy Spirit is leading him strategically to the place of hungry people that are ready to receive the word that are ready to receive Jesus. So he's the Lord of the harvest and he's leading you to the harvest. He's leading you to a place of transformation, impact and influence for his own name's sake. But sometimes the entry to that influence and impact is actually denying influence. Denying impact because it looks like the narrow road of least impact and you know revival breaks out there because of Paul being obedient and yielding to the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God is always looking to fill the hungry you ever been there where you're like shoving the gospel down someone's throat <laughs> they don't want it they're not hungry you do that for a month, 
you do that for a year, you know what I can guarantee you? You'll stop doing it. And I'm, by no means am I saying for us not to do it. We do outreach, we pray, we go into the mall, and we preach the gospel to the dogs and the cats and every human being that walks through those hallways. Uh, I'm not saying we should stop obeying, but I'm saying in our obedience, there is a river. Because we don't just obey instruction, we obey Him. So as we obey, it's a new depth, it's a new step into the river, into the river, into the river, until He has you. Until you become His mouthpiece. You become His hands. You become His feet. And can I, can I say this? I know that all of you have some kind of hunger and longing. I want to say this. In that depth is where you're satisfied. Is where you find life. Is where you find freedom and peace. It's actually, you're wired to be deep with God. You're wired to live in the river. You're, you're, you're not a snorkeler. You're a scuba diver. Like, you call to go deep. You're called to see those colors and see that life that other people that stay on the surface that they don't see. So, so you're wired for this. You're longing for this. But we stay shallow. You know, I also want to say sometimes when God gives you a hunger for something, it's actually coming from Him. He's measuring it out. You're supposed to steward that hunger. Like, you know, I'll just share something with you. For, for about a, a month, every night, I've been watching revivals. Um, Brownsville, Toronto Blessing, Wales, Azusa Street History. And a lot of them are videos, and some of the older ones are just history about what the Lord has done. And I realized, why am I, why am I watching this? And I realized God deposited a hunger into my heart. I, because when God puts something in you, it's always in the form of a seed. It's never completed. And now you have to cultivate it. You, you, you have to protect that flame. You, you have to steward that hunger. And as I'm watching, I'm realizing I'm hungry for this all of a sudden. And you know what that did? Over a month, last week I was driving in my car. And all of a sudden, I, I think some of you might be able to relate to this. But all of a sudden... I felt like revival is real for Vancouver. Revival is real from Portland. And it was almost like as I caught something from all of this, it's almost like the Spirit of God led me to just keep watching so that I can, so that I can steward this hunger and appetite for revival, for a tangible move of God, for the manifest presence of the Lord. And all of a sudden, just it was like a suddenly it was a suddenly where all of a sudden it became real where I begin to see revival in our city where I conceived this and now I'm realizing it doesn't stop there there's another measure there's another measure there's there is prayer sets there's Things where we're supposed to burn for Him and continuously give ourselves to Him and we will see what He promised. We will. And if you look at the history of revivals, it didn't start from suddenly. It started with a pursuit, with a hunger, with a... I'm not satisfied. I'm not content. I don't want a shallow life. I want a deep life with God. I want to know Him. I want to know the power of His resurrection. I want to know Him the way He knows me. And that stewardship of hunger brought the Lord Himself. 
And I believe that that's what he's going to do. I want you to stand to your feet. I'll never forget, if you've been with us for a while, I think I've shared this story once before. But I'll never forget when I went to Cuba, a communist country at that time, still communist, I, I think. <laughs> Not much changed. <laughs> but I was in Cuba, and I remember as I was going there, I was going through such attacks, guys. Like, if I shared the story with you, it was almost like I had to be willing to die to go. I was in the ER six times before my flight with heart issues and um, almost like all kinds of attacks, demonic attacks. It was so heavy. My wife said, I'm not allowing you to go unless you go and get checked up. This was the day before my flight. So anyway, she gives me a bunch of pills. I'm having these like pretty much where like I start to feel like I'm suffocating that I can't breathe and blood pressure, all this stuff, just, just, I can't even explain what's happening. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know why it's happening. And I remember, I knew that the Spirit of God is leading me to go to Cuba. I knew that something significant is supposed to happen there. But I had a choice to take another step, to go deeper, and it was costing me something. And so I got on the plane, and I said, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to do it because that's, that's the only way I know to do life is just to obey the Lord and think about it later, you know? <laughs> and when I got on the plane and we took off, I had pills in my pocket, all kinds of medication that doctors prescribed, my wife gave me. And the moment we, we went up on the plane with our team, I start to feel that heavy darkness and attack. And I started to feel like I'm going to black out. So I remember getting up as soon as the seatbelt sign went off. And I started like holding on to the chairs. And my only thought, the only thing I can think is, how can I just get to the bathroom? And it felt like all of my strength that I had within me, I was using to get there. And when I got there, I looked in that little cheap mirror and I said, devil, I will never stop preaching the gospel. If I can't walk, I'm going to crawl. But don't you think that this tactic will slow me down? It's only going to fuel my surrender to a deeper place. And I said, I said, I don't care if I die in Cuba, but I know I'll die preaching. And so as I said this, it was like this moment where, you know, the Bible says, stand against the enemy and flee, and he will flee from you. You're actually not supposed to go to God about the devil. You're actually supposed to go to the devil about the devil. Yeah. And stand against him. Why? Because the righteous are as bold as a lion. Yeah. It's not just boldness to preach somewhere. It's boldness to stand against the devil himself. Amen. And so, so I... I stood there and I said this, and the moment I released this, which is what? It's connected to surrender. It's connected to a decision. No, 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 no. I'm not double-minded about this. I'm not going to waver about this. I'm not going to negotiate this with my body, with how I feel, with how much I have in my bank account. No, 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 no. God spoke to me. So you have to choose higher supremacy. You have to choose higher authority, and that's the kingdom of God. That's the third heaven. God spoke to me. So you rise up to third heaven and then you talk back to the one that's talking trash. And so when I got out of there, I was filled with the power of God. All of those symptoms disappeared like lightning, just poof, gone. No more medication, no more hospital visits, completely gone. But I also realized, yeah, you can give God glory. Praise God. His love expels every fear. But I also realized I'm in a new level of death. I'm in a new level of surrender. I felt it. I felt like I walked into it. And then he said, you know, it's almost like the reward of surrendering is getting upgraded to a new level of surrender. Yeah. 
It's almost like, imagine you're like using all of your summer to advance and like, you know, get straight A's and to advance in education. And you're like, I can go hard and then relax and chill. No, no, no. You, you, you work hard and you advance and you come for testing and they're like, let's skip him another class so that he can work even harder. And you're like, man, what's the reward to that? That is the reward. Because sons, these are the sons of God, those who are led by the Spirit of God. And so there's a maturity there, there's a sonship there that, that brings this alignment and this obedience. So anyway, I have to close. I, I went to Cuba and I experienced what I'm talking about today. First of all, I was charged with the power of God and an anointing I've never experienced. I would get up on stage and I would explode. Like I would go so wild that people would have to catch me as I'm running around yeah. preaching. Miracles were happening. Uh, hunger was like stirred in the room. It was like so easy. There was a river. There was a river flowing. And I, I was sweating three times a day. Like my shirts were drenched. I was ministering. But I was so satisfied. And I realized like I want to learn how to live there. And so one night. We would gather in homes and people's yards and neighborhoods would climb up on the roofs to hear the gospel in a communist country because they didn't give us buildings. So we gathered in yards and, you know, some said it could be dangerous. Um, we didn't really care too much about that. And so we would gather and hundreds, hundreds of people would pack in to these like little properties people had and then Tens, if not hundreds of people, if it was in neighborhoods, would climb up on the roofs to watch and to hear the gospel. And so this night, I was, I was feeling the power of God. I was feeling like God wants to do something special. And I'm supposed to like grab the mic and break it in, you know? Because that's what I've been doing this whole trip. Yet the Lord says, don't touch the mic. But like... I'm the one preaching. Like, what do, you, what do you mean don't touch the mic? He says, don't touch the mic. Get off the stage and go to the very back. And so the natural mind kicks in and you're like, how is this going to, how is this going to do anything for the room? But again, the key is surrender. The key is obedience. The key is yielding. Because he's the Lord of the harvest, leading you to the harvest, leading you to answers, leading you to solutions in your generation, leading you to be an answer to the cry of the people. So I get to the back, and this is what I usually do. When I take the step and I look kind of foolish, because everyone's staring, like, what in the world is he doing? I have ushers following me, and I'm like, I'm like, you don't have to do that. You know? I'm not really doing anything. I'm just going to just stand here. And they're like, are you praying for somebody? They have like the whole ministry team around me. And I'm like, no, 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 guys, just try to like not give too much attention to what's happening here. Because <laughs> I already look dumb, you know. So I just kind of hid in the corner in the very back. And I'm like, because at that time, if you ever knew how to pray, this is when you don't. <laughs> and that's how I wait on the Lord. That, I just wait with him. I just wait by praying in the spirit because i don't want to think i'm not trying to think just trying to just i, I want to align myself with him so i'm standing there praying in the spirit praying in the spirit and then he says look behind you so i look and where we have a gate and i see across the street and it was dark and i see um i see a girl standing there and he says, I want you to go to her. Like, I already feel dumb. And now I feel dumber. So I get out. The usher starts following me. I'm like, no, 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 no don't, don't follow me. I open the gate. I come out. I walk across the street. And the worship team, you know, it's like the last song has passed. And they're like. And I'm like over there, you know. And so they're like, they don't know what to do. And I have to like turn that off because what he says 
should be a higher demand on your time, affection, attention, than what you hear people saying. You have to turn that off. So I get there, and I don't know what to say to this girl. I don't speak her language. I don't know anything. And I come up, and I just put my hand on her shoulder. I don't, like, I don't, I, she didn't understand English. So I put my hand on her shoulder. And the moment I put my hand on her shoulder, the Lord showed me everything about her life. It was like in a split second, I knew everything that happened to her from like childhood. I saw her whole journey in one second. I saw that first thing that I saw was that this is not a girl, this is a man. And I had to pause for a second and check her out <laughs> in the good sense of it. Because I'm like, Lord, are you saying this to me right now? Because like, this looks like a girl to me. And then he showed me that he was raped by a pastor, by a leader in his childhood. And he developed a hatred towards men to such a degree that he hated himself to the level that he changed himself to be a female so that he could live with himself. And so, I mean, try to get in a prophetic word like that. So I'm like, crap, you know? <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. I shouldn't have said that. That's what I thought. <laughs> I didn't say that. That's what I thought. And so I called the translator and I said, hey, can you please, by the way, it's illegal in Cuba to uh, be, even be gay, um, transgender, all that stuff. And it's like mocked and like people get... They, they'll have a hard time surviving there. So he's obviously afraid of even anyone knowing. So I, I grab the, the, the translator and I'm like, hey, can you just speak very quietly? I'm going to say some things to this person and I want you to speak quietly and just translate to them. And so I said, hey, I know that you're standing here because you're hungry for him. And I said, I want you to know that he sees you. And, you know, he starts crying right away. And I said, he loves you so much that he had me leave that stage, come to the back, walk across the street just for you. He stopped this whole service for you. And I said, I know what happened to you. And I just tell him, I just risked it because I don't know. So I just told him, I said, you're not a female, you're a male. You're a man. And you've changed yourself because you hate yourself because you were raped by a minister. And he just breaks open. Like, he starts wailing and screaming and crying. And I said, is this true? And he said, yeah. And I got the chance to pray for him to lead him to Jesus. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit right there in the alley in this dark street. And I say that to say like, when you experience that, try going back. When you know there is a river, there is a depth. And now my heart is yearning for that flow. My heart is yearning for the river. My heart is yearning for the leading of the Holy Spirit. And, and so it's, it's a life of yielding. And you know what happens? It looked foolish on the outside. But it brought deeper impact and influence. The power of God will be evident on your life. But you have to be willing to yield and surrender. There will be results. You will find yourself talking to the right person in the room. You will find yourself encountering the right person at the coffee shop. Why? Because he's leading you to people that are hungry. And you're yielded. And he's the Lord. You've never graduated Bible school, learned pastoral ministry, and become the Lord of the harvest. No, 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 no. He's the Lord of the harvest. Your degree doesn't allow you to be Lord. Nothing you know ever was a permission for you to be in charge. 
And so I'm telling you right now, because like Randy Clark says, if you don't say it, how will they know it's God? I want to tell you right now, we're going to see revival break out in Portland, Vancouver, in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to see a tangible move of God, a manifest presence of God flooding this city and transforming a city. We're going to encounter that. But you know, God's going to give us this sense of ownership to steward this, this responsibility. Because the invitation is made, the responsibility to walk the thousand cubits like we saw in Ezekiel. So just lift your hands as a sign of surrender. We can have the worship team come. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In this pursuit of the Lord and this progression of surrender where we give ourselves to Him, there's things that come in the way of that. There's oppression that comes in the way of that. 
And you know, when you go after this, you become dangerous to the devil. Not, the devil doesn't give his attention to everybody. If you're just a bench warmer, living your life, he doesn't care about you. But when you, when you begin to say yes to this and go after this, you're on the radar. And I just sense this by the Spirit, that there is people in the room where your depth has stopped because you need to confront the enemy. You need to take authority. You need to come against him right now and he's going to flee from you. And that darkness, that oppression is going to break off of you. Maybe it's financial weight. Maybe it's debt. Maybe it's uh, anxiety. Maybe it's different things relationally where you know what God's calling you to. You know the measure that he measured for you that he's inviting you to, 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 to walk. But something has come in the way of that. Many times when that happens to us, we start to look back and question what God said to us. Let me tell you, God doesn't change his mind about what he says to you. And so if, if you feel that, like man, I, there's areas in my life where I got stuck and I need to confront the enemy. I want you to respond by coming forward. And this is just, just a decision. But as you do, I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to declare something over your life. Whatever sphere that is, wherever fear has be become a limit to your obedience, uh, just, just step out and just say, Lord, I'm coming out. I, I, I'm going to continue to close that gap. I'm going to continue to walk that distance. I, I'm going to give myself to the river. This is my life, is to always say yes and continuously give myself to the river of God. And as the Holy Spirit highlights those areas to you where you need to confront the enemy, where you need to confront the thief, I want you to take authority and you speak. You speak to that enemy with authority, with power, with anointing from God. In Jesus' name. shaking embrace it embrace the pain embrace the unknown embrace the love of God we are more than conquerors through him who loved us can quickly have the ministry team just come and partner with the people that have come out just partner with them quickly and just release the word of the Lord over them ministry team quickly quickly it has to be in seconds quickly everyone that wherever this water flows 
it will cause the dead things to come to life the dead things to come to life marriages coming to life businesses coming to life relationships coming to life the salty water will become fresh again fresh 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 hunger fresh hunger freshness in the presence of God hunger for the word hunger for prayer and intimacy the salty water becoming fresh where everything's mundane, where everything's the same, where everything's as usual. There's life flowing into you and through you. Last night, actually, um, I saw this over you, that I just saw you in nations on medical missions. I saw you in nations on medical missions. And the Lord reminded me of my spiritual mother. Her name is Ula Stanrus. She's with the Lord. 35 years ago, she went to Tanzania, Africa on a medical mission trip. And it resulted in a mission center, mission-based Bible school training ground where they have planted 300 churches all over the remote parts. Started with a medical mission trip. And I just saw this on you, that, that same thing that Ula carried, that you're actually carrying. I saw it on you and that spirit that was on her, that it's actually on you. And it was kind of interesting because I, I usually don't like experience the prophetic that way. 
but I almost like saw Ula in you. And, and the Lord's like, I'm raising her up and she's going to have favor with uh, government officials. You're going to go into places where the gospel is not permitted to go. And your way in is going to be through medicine. But you're going to be a secret agent. You're going to be fearless. You're going to be bold. And you're going to bring the kingdom of God to areas where the gospel is not being preached right now. I don't know if this resonates with you at all. Yes? <laughs> So, Lord, just do it. We just release that over Marina. We just release it. We thank you, Lord, for this assignment. We thank you, Lord, for your prophetic word that leads her. Thank you that this resonates, and now you're confirming it in Jesus' name. Touch her, Holy Spirit. Oh, fill her. Fill her afresh, Lord. Fill her afresh, Lord. You are the way. It's impossible, but you are the way. You are the way. And just see favor even in the... In, with doctors favor extreme favor extreme extreme like favor friendships connections oh jesus name jesus name jesus name come on just give god just thanksgiving just lift your hands just begin to just oh just thank him for his presence drink of him drink of him drink of him thank you father thank you lord thank you for your holy spirit Thank you for your promise. God is so good. Come on, what a powerful word. Surrender. Surrender. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. He might be your friend. He might be your savior. But if he's Lord, that means he's Lord of all. Of your finances, of your relationships, of your ministry, of your job, of your family. So whatever the Lord is highlighting for you, and you know it, I want you to actually tell someone, I want you to write it down. What is the Lord asking you to surrender that you haven't yet, and it's been a weight, and it's been a sin, or one or the other, or whatever else, but it's held you back, and today it breaks off of your life, amen? Come on, let's not just hear a good message. Let's not just feel some goosebumps. Let's not just feel the presence of the Lord. Let's respond to Him. Let's obey Him. Let's obey Him. Whatever area has not he has not been Lord of in your life. You're still Lord. You're calling the shots. You're doing what you want to do. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. You're all his. So let's do that and share that with someone. This is what I'm laying down and surrendering, and I'm not going to be held back anymore. I'm not just going to stay on my ankles. I'm going to my knees. I'm going to my hips. I'm going all in. I'm going all in. All in. Amen. And that's what baptism is all about, too. It's about taking the next step and going all in. And so we have six people getting baptized. So I'm going to invite them to come up here. We'll just, they can stand here in a line. But if you're getting baptized, just come on up here. Um, baptism is so significant. It's one of the most significant things in a believer's life. The day you get born again, the day you give your life to Jesus, that you, you, you identify with being on the cross of Jesus... And, you, and you, you were crucified with him, new life comes to you. The most significant day in a person's life, the day that they're born again. Another one is the day that they're baptized in water. They actually are joining Christ not only on the cross, but in death and burial and in resurrection. And they're raised to walk in a new life. Baptism is the significant of something new coming upon you and you walk in something you didn't walk in before. Jesus' baptism wasn't a baptism of repentance of sins. Jesus' baptism Father God showed up, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and that's where his ministry started. That's where everything started. Miracles and his life with God started with that. So I believe that this baptism isn't just a goodbye to some old stuff, but it's actually, for many of these, actually it's a stepping into the new. And uh, Daniela Arroyo, she's getting baptized too. She's changing right now. Okay, cool. But you're stepping into something. The Father himself and the Holy Spirit are going to show up as you come up out of that water and you're going to come, come into something brand new. So we're so proud of these. There's four that are students of KMSM. There's a couple, actually five. And then there's one that's, that, that's not. But um, you, you'll get to hear just a little bit from them. And uh, we're really excited what God is doing in their heart. Their life has been transformed. And so we'll just take one at a time. We'll baptism, baptize them. Um, but this is Aaron. And God has been wrecking Aaron's life. The last six months, he's been on a journey of surrender. There's been things that have been falling off of him. He's been a believer since the age of like 12 or 13 or younger. Um, he's, what's that? 
born into it, born into the faith, and then just it made he made it his own. But he's been walking with the Lord, but like something radically has been happening. Even if they retreat, this is a new man. This is a man of boldness. Stuff has fallen off of him, and he's free from even old mindsets and habits and things. And so we're so proud of Aaron. Aaron is going to step into all of what God has for him. He's all in. He's not like 50% in. He's all in. So Aaron, tell us, why do you want to get baptized? Uh, I want to put to death the religious ways that I was raised in and the man that I thought I was and to give life to the man that God says I'm going to be. Come on. So this man is stepping into all things new. Come on in here. Yeah. Joseph, we'll let you get in there first. Come on. Joseph's a great leader. And the power of God's going to fall on both of you guys. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to invite some of the pastors and leaders of the ministry team to come. And as uh, they come out of the waters of baptism and stand here, we're just going to bless them. But Aaron, you're, because of your confession of faith in Jesus, your radical lifestyle to be a burning one, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Fall on him, Lord. Revival fire, fall on him. Fall on him in Jesus' name. A new and afresh. Never the same again. Come on, let's just lay hands on him. Team, you can just come. We just bless you. Depart for the gospel. We'll shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will. continue to minister and bless them. Next up, this is Rebecca, and she is from Rebecca. Yeah, I don't know why. I just had a double moment there, uh, but she's from Massachusetts. She's one of our students, and uh, the Lord is also radically marking her life. Um, when she was baptized at 16, it was because uh, of peer pressure, and it wasn't. She told her testimony so powerful, but this is like, she's like, the Lord's telling me I need to get baptized again. And actually, this, was, this is me. This is me going all in. This is me giving my whole heart and life to the Lord. But there's a special, special call and mark on this girl's life. And so we just affirm that. We put a demand on all the things that God has for you. But why are you getting baptized today? Just tell us a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Where do I even begin? <laughs> um, but really, at the retreat, like, the Lord just wrecked me. And, like, there was this one moment where I just was laying there and I was like man I just want to like I just want to rededicate my life like renew the promises that I made because I know I was washed clean I know I was saved and even though I've fallen into sin but like I just wanted to like renew those vows so yeah yes for a year she's felt from the Lord like she needs to get baptized and she's been hesitant it's like I was baptized the Lord's like get baptized you're a new creation so come on Rebecca, we baptize you into the new, into the fullness, into what you're stepping into. You're never going to be the same again. You're stepping into something like the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So Rebecca, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Into power. Into authority. Into freedom. Into healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, we bless you. Jesus. They're going to continue to minister to her. Guys, this is Kaylee Brown. She's coming to us from Ventura, California. 
She was part of City Church Ventura, and, and the Lord's called her here. The Lord himself has called her here. This is a special moment for her. She's never been baptized, um, and she's been feeling like she needs to for a while, and like she really felt like it was supposed to be in this community, uh, and she feels home here, and God wrecked her life, and this girl is going to change the world. She's a revivalist. She's all in, but tell us a little bit why you want to get baptized. Um, well, let's see. I really had to make a choice about eight months ago, like, where I wanted to go with my life, and I really, I wanted to lay it all down for the Lord, and I just chose Him. I said that if this is where you want me to go, I'll go, I'll follow you wherever you want me to be. Um, and during worship today, I was sitting there, I was like, I don't know what to say, like, I don't like talking in front of people, like, this is really scary for me. And he was just like, look at how far we've come. Like, we've come so far together. I'm so proud of you. Like, this is what we've been waiting for. So, yeah. So she's radically obeying the Lord and surrendering. And something supernatural and special is going to happen as we baptize you. So come on. Get in. Not just to your ankles, not just to your waist. All in. All in. So Kaylee Brown, we baptize you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To fire, into revival, in Jesus' name. You're never gonna be the same again. You're never going back. Woo! special one here, Marina, and it's crazy, Roman, that you called her out, because when we were talking to her earlier today about baptism, she says, I really feel like this is like, because I shared my testimony of like how I got baptized in the Jordan River like a second time, and it was into my calling, into like stepping into like the assignment on my life, the mantle of God of my life, and she's like, that's what the Lord spoke to me, like this is, I'm getting baptized, because she's, she's been baptized when she became a believer and in her church and all that stuff, but this is a baptism into her assignment and mantle. For her life, she's stepping into this mantle, and the Lord Himself is upon you and with you. And that word that was a confirmation of it all. So, like, we're so excited to baptize you into the full power and fire of the Holy Spirit. So, come on, tell us why and what's happening. Oh, I just I'm ready to step into my authority and just to confirm the whole reason why I went into. I'm a nurse. The whole reason why I went to go to nursing school and literally call my mom, I had a conversation with her, was that I will go for medical missions. For medical missions, those were my exact words. And I even said at home to so many people at home that I can go to different countries where nobody is allowed because of my degree, because of what I carry. So I'm so ready. Hallelujah. Woo. All in. All in. Hallelujah. Marina, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit into revival fire. You're going to change the world. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Mark her life. Set her apart for the gospel. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Markers set her apart. Praise God. Woo. Come on. Guys, this is Masha Nikiforov. And... Uh, she came to our community. She moved here from Florida, just wanting more of God. In May, she came here. In June, she got baptized with the Holy Spirit. And a couple weeks ago, just in small group, in Joseph and Anna's small group, she just had this, this encounter with the Lord and knew, like, I need to go deeper and more. And so today, 
She's like, I need to go all in and surrender everything to the Lord. She's never going to be the same again. The Lord is with her. She's been burning for two weeks. And so she's ready to like publicly make a vow to the Lord that she's all in once and for all. So tell us that. So I've been going to church ever since I was a little baby, but I didn't decide that I wanted to surrender my life to Jesus until I came to Kingdom Movement about a few months ago. And I started going to home groups and just after hearing everyone's testimonies and just my faith is at an all-time high and I'm ready to dedicate my life to God forever. Amen. So we're going to baptize you. I'm going to invite Vlad, her dad. He's here. Just come. And after she comes out, I want you to lay hands on her. But we bless you. You have some other family and friends here. Why don't you guys come to a special moment. So anyone that this is your girl, come. Masha. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ, your public confession of him, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All in. We release the fire of God over you in Jesus' name. Vlad, do you want to pray over her? follow you for the rest of her life, Lord. She's going to change this world for your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. We bless you. We bless you. All in. And this is her aunt. Come on, lay hands on her. Release a word. This is Daniela, and she's, uh, she lives in Anastasia and I's house. We've known her for many years, and uh, she's like a daughter to me, and uh, the Lord spoke to her today that she's supposed to be baptized. She's been baptized. She's serving the Lord. She loves Jesus. She's all in. She's a radical. She graduated two years of her Bible school in Ventura, and now Lord called her back to a year here at Camus Samba. This is a baptism that's special that is ordained by the Lord into, like, her authority and the mantle that's on her life. But just, like, tell us a little bit about, like, why, why are you getting baptized? Yeah, um, this wasn't planned at all. I was not prepared to, to get baptized today. Um, even when we were at the retreat and Vic, you're talking about when you got baptized in the Jordan River and how that was like into like your calling. Even as soon as you said that, like I feel like the Lord like shot through my spirit and he was like, you need to do it. Like you're going to do that. And I was like, no, like I don't know. Went back home, sat on it for a few days and feeling went away, so I was like, oh, I'm good, I'm not going to get baptized, like, it's fine. I get here, and we're in worship, and all of a sudden, I just feel like the Lord's like, you're going to get baptized. I was like, what? I like, no, I'm not, like, I've been baptized, like, I'm good. He was like, no, I want to baptize you into something different. He's like, I want to baptize you into fire. And I was like, I'm like, well, Lord, like, I'm not, I'm not ready, I'm so unprepared, like, I have nothing, nothing with me, I'm like, and that looks crazy to me. And he said, well, you look like a fool for me. So. Come on. So good. You know, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 13, it says that if I look like a fool, if I'm out of my mind, it's for him. If I'm in my right mind, it's for you guys, right? So, Daniela, we bless you. We bless you. Woo! I mean, God's already getting her. <laughs> wow. Come on. The Lord is upon you. He's anointed you. We baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Into everything God has for you. Into everything God has for you. Into everything.